Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be doing a quick review and demo of the marker airbrush from We Are Memory Keepers and using this little device you can create a splattered airbrush effect using pretty much any marker that you have. So you can use water-based uh, brush markers, you can use felt tip markers, you can use paint pens, you can also use your um, alcohol-based markers in with this device to create a splattered look. So if you really like that splattered um, airbrush effect, then you might find that this little device um, would be a good investment. It's an, and it retails, I think, for about fifteen dollars or so. So it's not very expensive. And as I said, this this one is from We Are Memory Keepers. You'll find it probably in most scrapbooking craft stores. Um, but other brands do make a very similar one. I've seen Ranger. They have one in black, and it's very similar, and it will work just as well, I think. So what this is is got it's got a little bottle. A little kind of pump pump that's shaped like like a little bottle here and you can pump it and it blows air out of this little fine tip and then you've got this attachment here for your pens so I'm just going to show you very quickly how it works you want to take a pen and you want to insert it in here and you want to push it along till it rests on that little flat end and then you just want to tighten it up you don't want to over tighten it because you don't want to push the pen in the middle and damage it so you just want to tighten it until the pen just stays still and then you just hold it down and start pumping and there you can see you can get this really nice splattered effect and the pos you can experiment a little bit with exactly where to place the tip of the pen in order to get um, the, b the best effect and the other thing is that the your pen needs to be full of ink it needs to be a juicy marker so if you've got a marker that's running out of ink then it may not work so well because all, all this is doing is blowing the ink off the end of the marker and I know a lot of you may be looking at this and thinking that it may that it might damage your markers. I've been using it a lot. I haven't found there's any problem with the ends of the markers because it's just blowing the ink off. I haven't found it to be damaging any of my markers. Um, but if you're worried about that, then you may uh, just want to use an inexpensive set of markers to do this technique with. So if you hold it up high, you get a um, the splatters are further apart. If you hold it much much closer to the table the splatters are much closer together so you can have lots of fun experimenting with this and coming up um, with a technique that um, will suit your project so that's the uh, dual brush pen from Mozart Supplies and as you can see it has this sort of fibre brush tip and any marker that has that will work quite well and I have found uh, I've done some experimenting I will experiment I will show you all of these uh, markers in a moment but um, I have found so far that the markers that work the best with this technique for me are the ones that have this juicy uh, brush tip so, th so that's the uh, Mozart Supply one. Now I don't have any coloured Tombos, but I do have this Tombow blender pen, and I'm just going to show you that it does fit. I'm not going to air I'm not going to airbrush with this colour because this is a colourless blender. There's no colour in it. But if I push it through, you can see that it fits just as well. So if you have Tombos, you can use them with this uh, little device. And again, that's the Tombos have a very similar tip. It's a it's a juicy brush tip. So that the Tombos should work very well with this. Another type of pen that um, you might have is a real brush pen. So this is one from Arteza, and as you can see, the bristles are like it's like a it's like a paintbrush. It's the real brush pen. Now this does work. It doesn't work as well as the uh, fiber tip brushes, but you can get a, quite an interesting effect. So I'm just going to push that in and gently rest it on the tip like that, and it may. By resting it on the top, it may sort of um, cause the, the bristles to um, flay out a little bit, just to kind of spread out. Um, but that's not a problem, because once you take it off, you can smooth them back together again. I haven't found that to be a problem. So I'm just going to use that. Now you can see how fine a mist you get with that. So that is the Mozart brush pen that has a, um, a, a brush tip, a fibre brush tip, and this is a brush pen that has a real brush tip, and you can see how fine a mist you get with that. So um, experimenting with all the different, if you have one of these, experimenting with all the different markers you have can be um, really beneficial because you, you can get really different effects depending on the tips of your markers. So there's some sort of um, water 
water-based uh, markers that I have here. Here is a very cheap children's um, felt tip pen that you can you kind of get these for like a um, a whole pack of twenty for a couple of a couple of a couple of euros, and that also works. And you can get a really nice mist with those as well, as you can see. So if you're worried about um, using your expensive markers to airbrush, then just just grab a pack of very cheap, inexpensive uh, children's pens that you can get for a couple of dollars. I mean, that will work just as well and you can get a lovely effect with them and you don't have to worry about ruining the nibs. Um, as I said, I haven't had any problems with the nibs on my end, but if it is something that worries you, then you can um, just use a pack of very cheap markers. Here I have a Zig Clean Color marker. I'm just sort of going through today and testing different markers so that you can see what's uh, what can work. Now this has a very small brush tip so if I just try to be careful so I don't damage the tip too much. There we go. And that is a very very fine fine mist. So I think the smaller the smaller the tip of the pen the finer the mist the finer the mist and the splatters will be. So if you want a very very fine mist or a very fine airbrush effect then you use a marker that has a very small has a small tip on it. And actually talking about markers that have small fine tips, you can actually use a fine liner as well. Now, how quickly it will go through your ink, I'm not sure. Um it depends on how much you airbrush. If you're just going to airbrush, you know, um once in a while to add an accent to a card or to a background um, then I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you're going to be airbrushing a lot then you may want to, as I said, invest in a very inexpensive set. I mean the Mozart brush pens are not an, uh, not an expensive supply and you could just invest in a pack of those just to use with the airbrushing. So look at that, you can even use a fine liner to create a misted effect. Isn't that cool? I just think this is really exciting that you can just use all these different pens. And so another pen, oh yes, I wanted to also show you that you can use a paint pen. So this is one of the Jane Davenport um, paint over pens. This is the mermaid colour, so this is the teal colour. And I'm just going to put that up. There. Attach that down. There we go. And look at this. Again, you can use any type of markers you have. Look around. If you have this, just look around uh, your workstation or where you keep your art supplies and have a look at what you have. So if I hold it really close, I get a very concentrated splatter. If I hold it far further up, I get a... Um, a more separated splatter. So you can have lots of fun with this and of course you can you can layer different colours together to create different effects. So you could do galaxies, you could just do so much with this. I'm really excited about this little device and I wanted to share it with you guys. So that, that's the Jane Davenport uh, paint over pen. I actually also have, where did I put, oh they're over here. Um, this is a little Posca paint pen. I wonder, I haven't actually tried this one yet so we're gonna find out. Now this is the one that has the finest tip. Um, the Posca paint pens come in lots of different sizes, but we'll see if this works. Ooh, look at that. Isn't, look at that vibrant pink. Isn't that just exciting? I love this. So look, look at what you can use. Just any pen, literally any pen, paint pens, water-based pens, any pen will work. So those are some water-based pens. Let me just grab a new piece of paper. Now, I looked at that small little hole a few days ago and then I took my Copic marker and I thought wouldn't it be great if I could use my Copic markers but look, they don't fit. Neither do the Pro markers. So I, was, I wasn't disappointed because these effects are really cool but then I came across a video online and I wasn't searching for it, it just sort of showed up in my recommended feed box, it was almost like magic and it was from, it was an old video, uh, when I mean old, it was a few years old, uh, it was from the Frugal Crafters a YouTube channel and she was showing how you could take out this little section, put the little screw back in and, and you make that little hole much bigger and look ooh, ooh, this can now fit so I was so excited when I saw that so I'm going to use the chisel end of my Copic marker I'm going to insert it in here 
and I'm just going to screw the screw back in a bit just to tighten it up and we now have a marker airbrush with the Copic markers and now Copic does sell a whole airbrushing system but if you wanted something that was inexpensive less than $20 and um, just to do a little bit of an, a splattery airbrushy effect then you could give this a go and look at that and this is with the chisel end. You could also um, use it with the brush end. And if I maybe if I can can I turn it round perhaps? And because the chisel end is um, like a little rectangle, so if I just twist it around a little bit, can I get it to stay? Let me see. Yeah, you can. You can use it. Oh, you get actually you get a completely different look. So this that that splatter there. If you hope I hope you can see that. But that splatter there was with the Copic marker lying flat and then with the Copic marker horizontal you get a much sort of finer mist look at that it is it reminds me exactly like an airbrush isn't that cool so that so that you you can use that with your Copic marker and it it's not damaging the marker I can't see any damage on the nib uh, let's try the Winsor & Newton uh, brush marker here so just put that in and I'm using this on the brush end. Whoa, nice big splatters with that one. Look at that. So you can see how much of a difference the, the, the nib the, the nib that you, you splatter from. So this is using a big brush nib. Look at that. You get a much, um, the splatters are much larger. This was with the chisel nib. Look how gentle and subtle that is. So maybe if I just take out this, put the lid back on, and I turn this around, let me just try this end. Let me try the chisel end of the brush marker. And look, you get a subtler look with that. So experiment. If you have double-ended markers, try the airbrush on both ends because you get a different, a different splatter depending on the end of the marker. Now, if you have any of the other brands of markers, um, any of the less expensive brands, uh, the uh, hoo-ha markers and things, this I'm sh pretty sure those will work. I don't have those to test, but... This is this is pretty big that gap, and I'm I should think that most markers will fit through. That's the marker airbrush from We Are Memory Keepers. Um, one other thing I want to mention here is that the inside there, and particularly this little end here, can get quite uh, dirty from all the marker tips. So um, what I would do after using it or in between colours is to clean that off. So use some rubbing alcohol if you're using alcohol-based markers, or use um, a wet a wet, a wet cloth or a baby wipe if you're using water-based markers and just wipe that off in between colours because you wouldn't want to be doing a lot of blue let's say and then put in a yellow marker and cross-contaminate the colours and then get the blue all over the, your marker tip so um, you want to just keep that end tidy but I think I think this is a great little device and I was so excited when I found that I could use my uh, larger markers in it by just taking out that little connection and you can just you can use any marker you have and I think that's I think when you when you when you work in different supplies I have quite a few different uh, brands of markers that I like to work in and use for different purposes if I can purchase a small device and this is for under twenty dollars if I can purchase something small that can be used that I can use with all my different brands then I think that's a really good investment and I really like the airbrushing splatter effect so for me it's very useful and um, hopefully this video can help you decide if this is something that uh, you you might may, may want to invest in or not so one thing I just want to quickly address is a concern that I know some of you may have and that is using your very expensive markers with the airbrush. Now I've been using this marker with the airbrush and I can see no sign of discoloration on the tips. I can see no sign of any damage or any wear to the marker or any um, any negative side effects in other words. But that said I don't use the, air, the marker airbrush all the time. I'm just using this occasionally for special effects. So I think um, what I would do if I was going to be doing a project where I was going to be using a lot of airbrushing, I think I would invest in a very cheap set of markers and uh, just use them for the airbrushing. You can get a load of different techniques uh, and variations depending on how big 
the tip of the marker is, the smaller the tip, the finer the mist will be. So with a very, very fine tip, very fine mist, with a, with a larger brush tip, you get a much larger splatter. And it also makes a difference uh, depending on how close you hold the airbrush to the paper. If you hold it very close, the um, ink splatters will be very concentrated, very close together. If you hold it further up, you'll get the splatter um, over a much wider area and there'll be m the splatters will be further apart. So anyway, um, that's all I have to say for today. I was very excited to pick up this little tool and I hope you found this review helpful. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below and I will see you guys again next time.